What's up everyone? Welcome to my channel. This video is about gearbox designing. So without spending much time, let's start now. Theoretically, engine should work at its maximum power to have the best performance. And for controlling the speed of vehicle, we need to vary engine's angular velocity. So for controlling engine angular velocity, we pick an angular velocity range omega 1 to omega 2 around omega m which is associated to maximum power pm and sweep the range repeatedly at different gears. The range omega 1 to omega 2 is called engine's working range. Here are some general guidelines followed while designing of gearbox. The first guideline is differential transmission ratio nd and the final gear nn should be designed such that the final gear nn is a direct gear nn equals to 1 when the vehicle is moving at maximum attainable speed. The first gear n1 may be designed by maximum desired torque at driving wheels. The maximum torque is determined by the slope of desired climbing road. The intermediate gears can be found by using gear stability condition. For determining middle gear ratios, there are two recommended methods. The first is geometric ratio method and the second is progressive ratio method. First, we are taking geometric ratio gearbox designing. When the jump of engine speed in two successive gears is constant at a vehicle speed, we call the gearbox geometric. The curve here is for geometric gearbox. It is between engine speed omega e and vehicle velocity v. It is shown at different gears n1, n2, n3 and n4 between a constant range of omega 1 to omega 2 and the velocities v1, v2, v3 and v4. You can see from the curve, the gears are changing between constant jump from omega 1 to omega 2. That is, on increasing the RPM of engine in first gear up to omega 2, then decreasing it to omega 1 and at that time shifting to second gear and then again increasing to omega 2 and this continues while shifting the other gears. The design condition for a geometric gearbox is Ni equals to Ni minus 1 divided by Cg. We know omega e equals to Ni multiplied by Nd multiplied by Vx divided by Rw. At omega e equals to omega 2, that is at the higher range of engine, we can write omega 2 equals to Ni multiplied by Nd multiplied by Vi divided by Rw, which is equals to Ni minus 1 multiplied by Nd multiplied by Vi minus 1 divided by Rw. From here we get Ni minus 1 divided by Ni equals to Vi divided by Vi minus 1, which is equals to Cg, where Cg is step jump. So we get Vi minus 1 equals to Vi divided by Cg. So just by knowing the value of step jump, we can calculate the velocity of vehicle at different gears. Things can seem a bit confusing here. Let's take an example and I'm sure you will get this. So here I am having a car of mass of 1400 kg, having a tire of effective radius of Rw equals to 0.325 meter. This car is having an engine running between omega 1 to omega 2, where omega 1 is equals to 2500 rpm, which is approximately equals to 261 radians per second and omega 2 equals to 5500 rpm which is approximately equals to 576 radians per second. The differential is having a ratio of nd equals to 4 and the maximum velocity of car is v max equals to 216 km per hour which is equals to 60 meter per second. At maximum speed of v max equals to 60 meter per second, the engine will not be able to accelerate the car further and at this time the engine is running at the maximum rpm of working range that is omega 2. Now let's design a 3 speed gearbox for this car. The curve will be like this having a range of 261 to 576 radians per second and at top gear that is third we are having maximum speed which is 60 meter per second. So at maximum speed omega e equals to omega 2 which is equals to 576 radians per second. We know Vx equals to Rw multiplied by omega e divided by Ni multiplied by Nd. At third gear, Ni equals to N3. After solving, we get N3 equals to 0.78. The equation Vx equals to 0.325 multiplied by omega e divided by 0.78 multiplied by 4 is valid till we are in third gear. By decreasing omega e and sweeping down over the working range, the speed of car will reduce. At the lower range, that is, at omega e equals to 261 radians per second, the vehicle speed is Vx equals to 27.18 meter per second. Now, we can't go below the RPM omega 1. So at this time, 
we will shift to second gear and jump to the high range omega 2 that is 576 radians per second at the speed of 27.18 meter per second. From here we will get 27.18 equals to 0 0.325 multiplied by 576 divided by 4 into n2 and n2 equals to 1.7218. Now equation vx equals to 0 0.325 multiplied by omega e divided by 4 into 1.7218 is valid till we are in second gear. By decreasing omega e and sweeping down over the working range, the speed of car will reduce. At the lower range omega e, the vehicle speed is vx equals to 12.31 meter per second. Now we can't go below the rpm omega 1. So at this time, we will shift to first gear and jump to the higher range omega 2, that is 576 radians per second at the vehicle speed of 12.31 meter per second and n1 equals to 3.8017. Again sweeping down the range, we can find the lowest speed of car at first gear which comes out 5.57 meter per second. You can also verify the values with step jump values given by cg equals to ni minus 1 divided by ni which is equals to n2 divided by n3 that gives us cg equals to 2.2074. cg can also be written as n1 divided by n2 that gives us n1 equals to 3.8007. A small variation in both of the values is because of not considering all the numbers after decimal. So just by knowing the engine range and the maximum velocity of vehicle, you can easily design a gearbox by finding the stable gear ratios to achieve the maximum speed. The difference between the vehicle speed at two successive gears is called the speed span given by delta vi equals to vi minus vi minus 1. The other method for designing a gearbox is progressive ratio gearbox designing which states when the speed span of vehicle in two successive gears is kept constant, we call the gearbox progressive. The curve between angular velocity of engine and forward velocity of vehicle is at different gears n1, n2, n3 and n4 with the higher range of engine omega 2 and the velocities v1, v2, v3 and v4. You can see that the difference between the velocity of vehicle between successive gears that is speed span is constant. So from here we get delta v1 equals to delta v2 equals to delta v3 equals to delta v4. So we can write delta v equals to vi minus vi minus 1 equals to vi plus 1 minus vi which gives us 2 equals to vi plus 1 divided by vi plus vi minus 1 divided by vi. On substituting velocity in terms of gear ni, we get ni plus 1 equals to ni multiplied by ni minus 1 divided by 2 times of ni minus 1 minus ni. This is the condition for progressive gearbox. The step jump is given by cgi equals to ni divided by ni plus 1. You can see from the curve the step jump of a progressive gearbox decreases in higher gears and gives us cgi equals to 2 minus 1 divided by cgi minus 1. So if you want to make a progressive type gearbox, you can use the design condition of progressive gearbox with a varying step jump. So this much for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have any queries regarding the video, you can comment in the comment box. Do like the video. If you find the video useful, do share it. Also subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon to get the latest updates. If you want to check my blogs on vehicle dynamics, automobiles and softwares, you can check on my website. The link is in the description box. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring.